Welcome and thank you so much Secretary um, Vilsack and Commissioner Cunningham for coming to Ramsey County and taking a tour and thanks to all of our guests that are here and Mayor Carter and our fellow County Commissioners uh, Nicole Fretham and Victoria Reinhardt are here. This is really important for us, for you to come, and we're really grateful that you chose Ramsey County uh, and our Rice Street Clinic. Um, you know, WIC and the USDA are making a difference in the lives of thousands of pregnant and postpartum women, infants, and children in Ramsey County. You know, tomorrow's Groundhog's Day. We're all thinking we can predict what's going to happen. The, folk, the folklore, though, says that we'll see if we see a shadow, there'll be six more weeks of winter, or if spring comes early, and we're all guessing that spring has already arrived here in Minnesota. But what we're all actually eagerly waiting to see is if Congress comes out and wakes up and decides to fund <laughs> our WIC program. So that's what we're hoping for in a, a new wake of Groundhog's Day. Uh, for 50 years, uh, WIC has been at the center of positive public health outcomes, championing access to healthy foods, breastfeeding support, health screenings, and referrals. As a proven effective health and nutrition program, there shouldn't be any shadow of doubt as to why WIC needs to be funded and uh, match rising needs of food costs for our community. When I was on active duty, myself and my children important. We qualified for WIC services as a military member. And if it wasn't for WIC, my children would have suffered. It is important that we fund these programs and that we make sure that all of our children and our families have what they need. It's emotional. <laughs> Uh, data shows that um, Minnesota women participating in WIC for three or more months had fewer infants born with low birth weight compared to those not on WIC. With the average medical expense for low birth weight in infants being more than $114,000, there's a significant cost when pregnant women don't receive adequate prenatal or nutritional support. For every dollar on WIC during the prenatal period, one to seven dollars are saved in Medicaid costs for newborn infants, and fully funding WIC is not only the right thing to do for healthy families, it also makes the most sense economically. Ramsey provides WIC services at six clinic sites, four in St. Paul and two in suburban Ramsey County. The clinics are located in communities where they are easily accessible, like this one, and all have evening hours for students and working families. The need for full funding is urgent and real. We've seen a nearly 7% increase in the number of WIC participants at our clinics since just May of 2023. In early 23, we were seeing an average of 16,000 participants each month at our six Ramsey County clinics. And in December of 23, we served more than 17,000 participants. You can easily grasp the potential impact in our county of funding cuts to WIC when you consider that in 2022, we serve 54% of all infants born in Ramsey County. We've seen a great economic progress and moderating prices recently as we continue to recover from COVID-19. But there are still many families continuing to face food insecurity and economic hardship. I wanna thank you, Secretary, for coming here and the Biden-Harris administration and members of Congress who understand that WIC means health and security for our families. It's really important. It's truly heartening to see that we do have bipartisan support of WIC programs, but we need more of it. And we urge Congress to act now to continue to fund these programs. It is my distinct pleasure now to introduce our WIC program director, Kate Franken from the Minnesota Department of Health. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Kate Franken, um, Minnesota State WIC Director and also the Chair of the National WIC Association Board. Um, it's so exciting, I think, to be here today to be able to share a little bit more about the WIC program with you, to have uh, the Secretary here really highlighting um, the power of the program. Um, WIC is a vital program that supports the health and well-being of pregnant postpartum women, infants, and young children up to the age of five. 
Women and children participating in WIC have healthier diets. The program also provides um, the food benefits not only um, su to supplement monthly groceries, but also providing key nutrients uh, for health and child development. And the benefits of WIC extend beyond food. Our local WIC agency nutrition educators um, are, are experts in nutrition, they are breastfeeding experts, they provide key referrals and other pub to uh, other public health programs that support families in our community. Families have one-on-one -on -one support to learn nutrition tips and guidance to meet their needs. People participating in WIC earlier in their pregnancy are more likely to breastfeed thanks to the one-on-one -on -one breastfeeding education and support. Many local agencies, including Ramsey County, have peer breastfeeding counselors. Um, people who have firsthand experience breastfeeding and with the WIC program in that community. More than 106,000 women, infants, and children received WIC benefits monthly last year in Minnesota. That's 7,000 more than the 2022 monthly average. The need is increasing. These families have opportunities to provide their growing children with healthy starts. Beyond that, participating in WIC during pregnancy we know improves birth outcomes, it lowers infant mortality, and promotes child cognitive development. 2024 marks the 50th anniversary of the WIC program, and in, and in celebrating the success of this program, um, we must also keep WIC strong and the importance of full funding so that we can continue our mission and service to families. Um, it's been an honor for me to serve as board chair for the National WIC Association this past year, and during this time, I've had the chance to, chance to see how WIC is serving communities of all kinds across this country to strengthen families and communities. Now I'd like to introduce a WIC participant and peer breastfeeding counselor, see her. Um, hi everyone, uh, my name is see her. Um, I am a um, WIC participant. Um, a peer breastfeeding counselor and also a mentee in the WIC um, Lactation Consultant Mentorship Program. Um, I, as a WIC participant, I found WIC to be very meaningful to me and my family because WIC educated me how to eat healthy when I was, in, when I was, when I was pregnant. Um, and also WIC provided me with breastfeeding education so that I can be prepared after I gave birth how to breastfeed. Um, WIC uh, means a lot to me and my mom community because um, many of us don't know um, much about nutrition and breastfeeding. Um, after I have my second baby, I decided to come work for WIC because I love WIC. Um, so I'm working as a peer and breastfeeding counselor for WIC and I love my job. Um, because I get the opportunity to educate pregnant women about the importance of breastfeeding, like the health benefits of breastfeeding. And then I also got the opportunity to work with um, breastfeeding moms um, help them um, to overcome breastfeeding challenges. Um, breastfeeding can be difficult for some uh, people, especially during the first few weeks after you just give birth. So um, I make sure that all my clients have my work cell phone number so that they can call me or text me whenever they encounter any breastfeeding difficulty. Um, and I also check on them regularly to make sure that breastfeeding is going smoothly um, so that mom can breastfeed for as long as possible because um, breast milk is the most precious and the best medicine in this world. Um, also, as uh, Rams County WIC PM and breastfeeding counselors, we have ongoing training with the county and also with the uh, state of Minnesota to stay um, up to date with the most recent breastfeeding research. Um, I am also a chosen candidate to participate in the WIC um, Lactation Consultant uh, Mentorship Program to become a Lactation Consultant. Um, the United States of America has a large Hmong population, but according to the um, Hmong Breastfeeding Coalition, we only have one Hmong Lactation Consultant in this country. Um, at this moment, at this moment, we do not have any Hmong lactation consultants in Minnesota. Um, by completing my um, IBCLC credential with the um, WIC lactation consultant mentorship program, 
I hope to become the first Hmong lactation consultant in Minnesota. Also, um, the WIC program is not just about the food package. WIC is more than that. Um, WIC is about teaching and educating women how to eat healthy during the critical um, stage in their life, such as during pregnancy, um, the postpartum period, the first five years of their children's life, and um, assigning uh, a peer and breastfeeding counselor to each mom so that they can get ongoing breastfeeding supports for the first year of their uh, baby's life. Um, WIC is about bringing the light into the low-income community by teaching them how to stay healthy by using the power of nutrition and breast milk um, to minimize the need of hospital visits and medications. Thank you. Um, and now I will introduce Bao Ying. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my experience about the WIC program and how WIC has changed my life. I am honored to be here today because I believe my story illustrates the struggles that many low-income families experience on a daily basis. I had been a WIC participant for over eight years, and I have five children who have gone through or currently on the WIC program. Because of time, I'm going to share one story of an important time in my life where a wick was essential to the health and well-being of my, of my family. One of the toughest times of my life was during COVID. I had my third child during the formula shortage and recall. My whole family caught COVID exactly one week after I gave birth. I felt like the life I once knew was gone and my whole support system collapsed. In the midst of my family's coughing and puking, my toddler's pulling, climbing all over me, and my baby crying, I was desperately trying to think of how to protect the most vulnerable person in my house, which was my baby. I completed my WIC appointment over the phone and learned that breast milk had antibodies that could protect my baby against viruses. After the WIC uh, appointment, I also got a call from the breastfeeding counselor to help support my breastfeeding journey. Breastfeeding is a challenge every time I have a new baby, because every baby is different, and it's the baby's first time breastfeeding. It can take up to a couple weeks to establish breastfeeding, and my health insurance will only pay for two visits to see a lactation consultant. I was able to successfully breastfeed my baby because of the dedication and help from the WIC staff. The staff not only ensured that I was able to establish breastfeeding, but also supported me through the different stages of development that my baby went through that first year, to ensure that I continue to be successful at breastfeeding until I and the baby were ready to wean off. The WIC staff also provided me with resources and healthy food packages to ensure that I was getting the support that I needed to be healthy. Because at WIC, they know that mothers are always busy taking care of everyone else, and often sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves in order to take care of others as well. My family and I are eating healthier today because of WIC. For example, WIC introduced us to different foods such as whole grains and peanut butter and low sugar cereal, which has not been traditionally a part of my culture's diet. The health educa educators at WIC gave me the space to unpack and talk about important topics such as my child's health and nutrition and provide education that I needed to make informed decisions about my child's health. I was able to overcome this dark time in my life because despite of all the chaos going on around me, I was able to successfully breastfeed my baby and not have to worry about my baby getting sick or not having anything to drink. I got the social emotional support that I needed to take care of myself and my family, and my family got nutritious food benefits in order to stay healthy. So as you all heard, WIG is a unique program where it doesn't only provide one specific service, but addresses health and nutrition from many different angles. I have many more examples of why WIC is important in my life, but I hope that the example I gave today illustrates the importance of the WIC program. When I know someone is pregnant, the first thing I ask them is if they have applied for WIC, because I can't imagine how my life would have been without the WIC program. There is this saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, WIC is raising families and creating a better tomorrow for the United States of America. Without WIC, one of the most important pillars supporting our most vulnerable families will collapse. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be here this morning. My name is Brooke Cunningham. I'm the Commissioner of Health at the Minnesota Department of Health. And I want to thank Secretary Vilsack for coming to Minnesota in its 50th anniversary year to, of WIC to highlight the importance of keeping WIC fully funded. Food security, nutrition security, and hunger are real problems locally and nationally. In Minnesota, with one in 11 children facing hunger and food shelves facing demand at record high levels, this is the time when we need to secure WIC's future. WIC is key to Minnesotans' goal of giving every child a healthy start. In 2022, Minnesota WIC served 38% of all infants born in the state. And Minnesota WIC participants purchase 78 million in WIC foods at grocery stores in Minnesota. And we have already heard about the growing need for food supports. And WIC is more than just access to healthy food. We've, we've heard that this morning as well. It's connection to health education, breastfeeding support, and connection to health services. And the food access is critically important. The fruit and vegetable benefits alone to WIC participants in 2022 totaled close to $27 million. WIC has won broad support over the years because it's the right thing to do for children, for their health, and for families. And today's event is so important because we need Congress to help ensure Minnesota families continue to get the nutritious foods they need to thrive. WIC relies on federal funding to make sure we can provide these important services to every eligible family in Minnesota. Minnesota WIC has received funding from USDA that will allow us to cover costs through spring. But if Congress does not act to fully fund WIC, the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities projects 32,000 eligible Minnesotans would be turned away in September 2024. There have not been waiting lists for eligible Minnesota participants in nearly 30 years. We don't want to be in a position where we cannot serve families who deserve the benefits that the WIC program provides. So now it is my honor to introduce United States Department of Agriculture Secretary, Secretary Tom Vilsack. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, Commissioner, thanks very much. Uh, you know, this is, uh, they call this a WIC center. Uh, it's actually a miracle center. Uh, I wish that all of the folks in Minnesota, uh, and for that matter, all the folks in the country could have had the experience I have had in the last hour or so. Uh, Kathy W. and her team uh, gave me a tour of the facility. I uh, had an opportunity to talk to professionals who are genuinely uh, and passionately more concerned about the, this program and the women and the children that they serve. Uh, and then I had an extraordinary opportunity to talk with several beneficiaries from the program uh, who told compelling stories about the difference that this program has made in their lives. Uh, you just heard uh, examples. Uh, had a chance to uh, understand and appreciate the partnerships that have been formed as a result of this uh, program uh, and the important work uh, that continues here. Uh, I jokingly had to say, Mayor, uh, that it's not easy for a former governor of Iowa to travel up to Minnesota <laughs> uh, and to say good things about Minnesota. <laughs> but I want to tell you, I am genuinely, Commissioner, genuinely impressed with the work that Minnesota has done. Uh, across the board uh, when it comes to serving families uh, in need, uh, particularly as it relates to nutrition and uh, uh, food security uh, challenges. Uh, this is a state that not only has embraced uh, the opportunity to expand WIC participation and is among uh, the top two or three states in the country for participating. Uh, the average WIC participation rate uh, nationally is roughly 51%. Uh, I believe Minnesota is at 61 or 62 percent, uh, and that speaks volumes uh, for the folks, the professionals who work here uh, in WIC clinics across uh, the state. You've got 85 WIC agencies. Uh, they're operating uh, 230 clinics, as was mentioned, 
and they are providing uh, economic support for not only families, but the 728 WIC food vendors uh, who provide uh, the choice and the options for WIC families to participate. You've heard that here in this county, 17,000 uh, participants are involved uh, in six clinics that are operated in this county. Uh, this is a clinic and a system that understands the diversity of uh, the population in Minnesota. Uh, as I was again uh, speaking to the gr smaller group earlier today, I think there is the impression uh, around the country uh, that Minnesota is somewhat monolithic, that it is somewhat uh, Norwegian, Scandinavian oriented. It's that Viking ship at the beginning of the NFL games and all that. Uh, but I was also told that in the St. Paul Public Schools, you got 122 different languages that are spoken. Uh, and that is reflective of significant diversity. And you have to have programs that understand and appreciate that diversity. Uh, and so if you travel around this particular clinic, you're going to see individuals who can relate to the population centers in this county, who understand the language, who understand the culture, who understand perhaps the reticence of coming into a facility like this. Um, tremendous, uh, tremendous work being done here. Uh, work that was also done during COVID uh, understanding the importance of uh, making sure that uh, f outreach continued. Um, Minnesota embracing the opportunity for modernization of WIC, understanding that it's a balance uh, between that personal contact that is so important, the ability of folks uh, across the table uh, not to dictate, uh, but to listen. And from listening, uh, being able to adjust and provide advice uh, in a way that resonates. Uh, with people across the table, but at the same time recognizing that because some families are faced with transportation challenges or workforce schedules or uh, just they just can't get into the clinic, uh, another opportunity to utilize technology so that connection continues, uh, whether it's a text or a call uh, or a meeting. Uh, this is also a state that understands the continuum of nutrition assistance. Uh, not only are you committed to WIC, uh, but it is a state that signed up for summer EBT, the summer feeding program uh, that's going to impact tens of thousands of young people here in the state of Minnesota. As school ends, uh, a summer feeding program begins that uh, complements the congregate summer feeding programs that you all have been able to, uh, to provide for many, many years. Providing assistance and help uh, to families, uh, $40 a month per child for three months going to provide a little extra help uh, for, for families. Um, it is a, a, a state that ha has embraced uh, the opportunity to modernize uh, programs, including the WIC program. Mention was made uh, of uh, the online shopping opportunity. Uh, this essentially is going to allow WIC participants to feel uh, just as everyone else can, of uh, being able to do shopping at Hy-Vee uh, as conveniently as possible. Uh, by utilizing uh, online shopping to basically make their orders and make their choices and, and arrange for a pickup, just like the rest of us can with our, our, our normal groceries. Um, this is a, um, a WIC program that also understands the importance of continued uh, convenience, uh, uh, investing uh, as we are with the modernization and creating a portal uh, in which information can be more readily available to folks or easily obtainable whether it's their scheduled appointment or whether it's where there's the nearest clinic or how do I get involved in this program. Um, I think it's been state, stated very well uh, by the other speakers of the significance and importance of WIC uh, and its impact on, on children. Uh, but I think it bears repeating. Uh, when you have healthy diets at the beginning of life, uh, you clearly have healthier children. Uh, when you have assistance and help for pregnant moms, uh, you do reduce the number of low birth ba babies uh, and the consequences uh, uh, that can be sometimes very challenging for families. You clearly reduce health care costs, uh, as was mentioned, uh, not just by virtue of the low birth weight baby, but also by virtue of the immunizations and preventative care that is part of the WIC program. Uh, we know from evidence better cognitive development uh, when youngsters are accessing better and more nutritious foods which means that they are in fact ready to learn uh, and to t fully utilize uh, the opportunities to be productive citizens. Uh, and this is a program that I think also understands, as I've stated earlier about the diversity of the workforce, 
the importance of equity uh, uh, injected in the program. So what is the consequence and why am I here? Well, for the first time in 25 years, uh, we've placed uh, our WIC program and those who service the WIC program in a bit of a, of a tense situation because we've been honest with them. Uh, we've said uh, with the budget uh, in Congress failing to pass a full-time budget, uh, we clearly can't tell you today uh, the level of funding that will be available uh, throughout this fiscal year. Uh, Congress has essentially told us spend the money as if you have it, but you may not have it. Uh, and I know that uh, folks in the Midwest and in Minnesota are a bit skeptical of the notion of spending in advance. Um, and so uh, you have to be concerned about the impact that when and if Congress finally makes its decision on a budget, that it actually doesn't fully fund WIC for the first time in 25 years and the consequence of that. It's important for people to understand the consequence of that decision. The consequence is that we will tell this incre incredible clinic and group of clinics, you're going to have to make some tough choices. And the first thing that's probably going to suffer is access. You know, one of the things that is most uh, uh, impressive about this particular uh, uh, set of clinics in this county is their commitment to accessibility. And it was mentioned uh, uh, earlier. Uh, the ability to have hours that make sense uh, for working moms. The ability to provide text messaging. The, all, of their, all of that is a cost associated with it. And that is a cost that if you have to cut back, maybe you cut back on the accessibility of the program. Uh, we've talked about the importance of partnerships, and the, and the fact is that this is a program that allows families to understand the continuum of care that's available. Uh, it's not just about WIC. Uh, it's about the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. It's about, uh, 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 you know, the various uh, other support programs and health care programs that can help families get through difficult times. When you are looking at a difficult budget you and, and you know your core mission, the peripheral partnerships that are important to extend that core mission may be the first things to go when you have to reduce budgets. And when you uh, sever those partnerships, you sever that line of support for families. And it can have a profound impact uh, on those families. And you can never really fully build the trust back uh, that is lost when services are disrupted. So this is incredibly important. Uh, and Congress needs to understand and appreciate the importance of fully and adequately funding WIC. Uh, what is the difference? Well, we're right now we're roughly a billion dollars below what is necessary to fully and adequately fund WIC in terms of budgets that have been proposed and considered. Uh, that gets us uh, to the late summer uh, when we would have to basically tell folks at the end of the fiscal year there is literally no money. Not that there's reduced money. There's no money because we would have spent the September money and the August money in April. Uh, and that's just an untenable circumstance and situation with so many families. What are you going to tell those 17,000 families in this county? Uh, what are we going to tell the nearly 6.5 million families across America uh, that, that the programs that they relied on, uh, that breastfeeding information is not going to be available for a while? Well, you only have for young moms one opportunity to make that introduction, to get them comfortable. Uh, and make no mistake, uh, this is not a simple process. Uh, there is a reason why we have counselors, and there's a reason why we have a system to encourage breastfeeding, because it is not a simple proposition. Uh, every child, every mom is different. Every circumstance is different. Uh, so. I'm here today uh, to thank those who are participating in WIC, but to urge Congress uh, to end the tension and, and uncertainty that we now have, the cloud that we've put over the good people that are working in this clinic and clinics all across America, uh, indicate to them with confidence that, in fact, they understand and appreciate the important work that's been done by, uh, by WIC uh, and that we indeed uh, are going to fully and adequately fund the program. Uh, I don't want to be the secretary for the first time in 25 years that basically has to say, sorry, we just don't have the resources. And I don't want to have uh, Kathy and her team uh, have to make some very tough decisions 
uh, prioritizing. Commissioner, I don't want you to have to uh, take the calls that come in from legislators and others who can't understand why they're now getting calls uh, about why is WIC being cut um, and you having to explain that they're now waiting lists. Uh, they're now breastfeeding assistance not being available. You have circumstances where children one to five don't get the kind of nutritional assistance that they need. Uh, a grocery store is asking why uh, they're seeing a, a, a difference in terms of WIC participation. We shouldn't have to answer those questions. Not in the most powerful nation on earth, not in an economy that is, uh, that is improving better than any other economy post-pandemic uh, in the world. Uh, not in a, a, a place where, where uh, there is an understanding and appreciation for the importance of investing in children at an early age. So again, thank you very much for everything you're doing. Um, uh, kudos as well to the uh, state of Minnesota for understanding the importance of universal free school meals. Uh, again, uh, one of the leaders in the country, uh, one of uh, 10 or 11 states that have made that, uh, that commitment and that investment in children. So when you look at the totality uh, of a WIC program at its high percentage participating, you look at um, the summer feeding program, you look at universal free meals, uh, the folks from Minnesota can genuinely be proud uh, of the people who are working in this space uh, because uh, kids up here uh, are getting a better deal than in many, many other states. And you should, you should definitely be proud of it and certainly be proud of the partnerships and the enthusiasm and the passion that people bring to their work. Uh, it's certainly impressive to see. So with that, I'd be uh, happy to try to answer any questions if there are any from the press or the air participants. Press, any questions? You mentioned that Minnesota has funding through September. Is that? It, it, it's actually everybody. It, essentially, uh, what's happened is we have a continuing resolution. Uh, we don't have a budget. We have Congress basically saying, pretend that you have the same money you had last year. Well, the problem is between this time and last year, WIC participation, because the great work of folks, has increased. So there are actually more WIC participants. So the cost of WIC. Uh, is a bit more expensive. So when they allocate the resource and they say spend as if you had the same amount last year, if you spent it the way you spent it last year, we would be having waiting lists now. Okay? But Congress has directed us that additional money uh, that, that we've provided you with the continuing resolution uh, act as if you have that uh, available and that you're going to continue to have full funding so you can feel free to spend forward. So take that September money that you might have or that August money or that July money and spend it in February and March. Well, the problem is if Congress comes back and says, well, just couldn't get there, sorry about that, what we'll face in the, sp in the summer is a circumstance where we will literally have no money. And, and each state administers the program. And so our message to the state will be sort of you're on your own, which means that uh, when that message gets conveyed, Kathy and her team are going to sit down around a table and they're going to say, okay, what goes first? Is it the breastfeeding? Is it the hours? Is it the texting? Uh, is it uh, the pop-up uh, mobile unit we have. I mean, this is another example of, of how deeply these folks care. They have a, a van outside, and that van travels around and goes to people who can't get into a clinic. Now, who would those people be? Well, how about high school students? You know, high school students who absolutely need that help. I mean, parenting is tough, really tough if you're a high school kid. So now you've got that clinic traveling to them and making it easier for them and not as embarrassing for them and not as difficult for them, and they're getting the information. Well, you know, that pop-up thing is great, but when you spend a staff person and they go out and they, they see, what, two or three people in a day, as opposed to the folks here who are seeing a lot more in a day, you go, well, maybe that's an expense we just can't afford. And of all the people that need it, those kids in high school need it probably more than anybody. So those kinds of decisions, we, that we just shouldn't have to force people to make those kinds of decisions as to decide who's more important. Is, is, is the breastfeeding counseling more important than the child who has 
specific nutritional needs because of a certain health condition where the WIC package gets tailored a little bit so that those health care needs can be met. Which of those two kids is more important? Which of those services is more important? Yeah, I mean, these are decisions that nobody should have to make, much less the folks who care deeply about everybody that they serve. So the idea here is for Congress to understand the significance of this program. And candidly, we ought not to be having this conversation at all if WIC were what is called a mandatory program as opposed to a discretionary budget program, the difference being a SNAP program, for example, is mandatory. So whatever the population is, that's, that's what we spend because it's a high priority. WIC is a discretionary program, which means that every single year, WIC has to compete with the Defense Department and the Veterans Affairs Department initially within the USDA, you know, USDA has to compete for money within the federal budget, and then within the USDA budget, it has to compete as well. Well, it really shouldn't be a competition here. We, none of our other food assistance programs really, for all intents and purposes, compete. They're mandatory. Has there been be, efforts to change it so that we could we've, we could We're suggesting that, and, you know, right now Congress is, uh, we can't get them to fully fund it, much less embrace the notion of mandatory and that's the purpose of these events frankly is to is to lift up the awareness on the part of ordinary folks about the significance of this program uh, and it, it, you know it is reflective of the values of a state that you have such a great program and you've made such a commitment to it uh, and you know as a country we ought to make that same level of commitment can you speak to the state of negotiations uh, specifically with republicans in the house um, on nutrition programs generally, um, what compromises could potentially be made here, and could it include something like additional uh, participation requirements on SNAP? Well, I, I would say the negotiations on nutrition uh, programs has already occurred and has already taken place. If you'll remember uh, back uh, several months ago, the, there was reluctance to, look, to increase the debt ceiling. Um, and to threaten the entire financial infrastructure and, and foundation of this country. Uh, in order to get the debt ceiling resolved, decisions were made and commitments were made to, in fact, uh, increase the age limit for able-bodied uh, adults without dependents in terms of uh, limitations on potential benefits, uh, absent work or training, uh, l increasing the age level which would essentially encourage and require more people to participate uh, in those activities before they could get SNAP. So that negotiation has already taken place. And the deal and the understanding was, well, this is it. This is all we're going to do in that space. So that negotiation's over. Uh, it took place, concessions were made, um, and the debt ceiling was raised. Um, so in the context of the budget, that's not, that's not part of the, that, that shouldn't be part of the conversation because that deal's already been struck. Um, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, there, I, I think the, the budget that was, that was ultimately approved by the House Ag Appropriations Subcommittee, where the, the system is, there are 12 different appropriations subcommittees, uh, we're in the Ag Appropriations Subcommittee, the budget that that subcommittee proposed couldn't get the votes on the House floor because there were enough Democrats and Republicans that said the equivalent of nearly a 20% cut to the USDA budget was unacceptable. And so there really isn't a House budget per se. The Senate Ag Committee got its budget through committee. They're using that as a basis for the conversation. Um, and that uh, essentially has an, a number for WIC that is below what's necessary to adequately fund it. So I think the, the question then is, in terms of the overall federal budget, are there, is there any higher priority than, uh, than a, a, a additional funding for WIC? And you know, our view is that it's one of the highest priorities, so they should find the resource to make sure that it's funded adequately. Uh, what, uh, just to put a timetable for people to kind of associate with this, like. How soon does the budget need to get improved to where it can take effect and, you know, start helping families? Like, what's just kind of the timetable to... Congress is lucky this is a leap year, 
it gives them an, <laughs> gives them an additional day. Um, uh, basically, they have passed a continuing resolution with reference to the USDA budget uh, that will expire uh, on February 29th. So they need to take action uh, on our budget prior to March 1st, or we'll be in a uh, government shutdown mode in terms of the USDA. So the expectation is that, that work will get done this month so that a, bu a budget is finalized. And here, here's the real challenge with all of this. Uh, I was mentioning uh, that Congress has not passed a budget on time. Their fiscal year ends September 30th. They haven't passed a budget on time since 1995. I asked several of the participants in the meeting that I just had to think about where they were in 1995. And <laughs> one of them said to me, uh, middle school. Uh, you know, it's a long time ago. 1995, haven't had a budget on time. Um, the problem is that when you have continuing resolutions, which ultimately lead to a budget where you basically say to a department, you actually are going to have less than you thought you were going to have, unless that when you had the year before. Shortening the amount of time to manage that budget cut it exacerbates the problem. So for example, if they wait until March to essentially say, here's your budget, Mr. Secretary, and it's a 5% cut, it's not really a 5% cut of the remaining uh, of what we have left in the budget. It's actually closer to a 10% cut because five months, six months of the fiscal year has already expired. So it just complicates it so that you're in a position of either having to sacrifice programs or people or both at a time when their needs for programs and people are, are, are important and necessary. So March 1st is the deadline uh, by which they have to get their work done. Uh, and hopefully sometime in February we get a sense, uh, I'm told, that uh, the appropriators have negotiated what are called top line numbers. So initially, the leaders of the House and the Senate negotiated an overall, overall arching number, uh, which was consistent with the debt ceiling uh, deal that was made. Then within that overarching number, 12 numbers had to be set for each individual budget area. And we don't yet know what that number is for USDA. And hopefully it's a good number. Um, but if it's not, then, uh, then we really have to start to scramble a little bit. And if it's not a number that allows WIC to be fully funded, then the message gets sent to the team here, here are the decisions you're going to have to start making. And the impact of that, as you know, is going to be pretty significant. Question for the commissioner. The 32,000 Minnesotans that could be affected in September, is that a certain portion of women and children out of the 100,000 that receive WIC? So again, if we don't have funding, we are going to have to make those tough decisions um, that the secretary is, is talking about. Um, and so that's a projection for the team. Uh, what we're seeing is an increasing need um, as, as people are challenged continuously um, in their economic situations, um, as we see the hunger needs in Minnesota. And so the projection of, from the team is 32,000 uh, Minnesotans would not, that would be a decision, that we would not be able to extend uh, services to any additional Minnesotans to that magnitude. The thing about this program uh, is that uh, people don't stop having children <laughs> because there's a, a, a reduction, right? They continue to have, and there, there continue to be folks who've never participated in WIC before who learn about the program and go, oh, gosh, I, I want to participate. So to the extent that the decisions you have to make become quite severe after you've gone around the edges and the pop-up truck doesn't go to the high school anymore, and so there's three kids who don't get the, the assistance, well, then all of a sudden you're faced with even that isn't enough. And so you basically say, we're going to have to create a waiting list. So somebody who joins the program, wants to join the program, is going to have to wait until there's like a slot available. Well, depending upon how long it takes for that slot to become available, you're talking about a lot of people. But you've got services in the meantime being cut for, for, all, for many of the populations that are serviced by WIC. Last question. Why is the number of WIC uh people that want to join WIC, why is that going up? 
Well, uh, it's going up in large part because uh, we've provided resources uh, to encourage WIC to create the partnerships and to facilitate awareness of the program. Um, as I said earlier, uh, roughly 50, 51 percent of overall eligible people currently participate nationally. So there are some states, for example, unlike Minnesota, where the participation rate is 30 or 40 percent. Uh, given the, the benefits of this program, given the cost savings in terms of health care costs, uh, given uh, the cognizant development that occurs, the, the, the benefits that, that, that WIC, through evidence-based, this is not just me making this up, this is based on a long-term uh, longitudinal studies of the effect and impact of WIC. We know it saves money. We know it saves lives. We know it increases cognitive ability. Uh, the benefits of the program outweigh over, long, over time the costs. So you want to encourage more and more people to do this because it's more preventative, if you will. Uh, so uh, by doing that, folks have gone out and said, hey, uh, let's partner. Let's make sure we are utilizing partnerships that could uh, um, create an awareness of the program. I mean, you've got advocacy groups here in Minnesota who know about the WIC program, who basically, when they uh, uh, get uh, connected with folks, they basically say, have you thought about WIC? Have you thought about SNAP? Have you thought about... Um, you know, summer EBT, if you thought about these programs, and we'll, we'll help you participate. So it's an outreach effort. I mean, you just said that, uh, you know, our economy is doing really good. So in turn, that should actually make it, people are making more money, things are getting better. Th th this but, is, but then joining WIC, it doesn't, it doesn't show that. Th th this isn't so much, a, this isn't so much a, a like, like your SNAP numbers have come down a little bit that is a, more of a reflection of an improving economy. This is really not so much tied as much to, to, to income as it is to uh, the status of, of newborns, right? This is a little slightly different than a SNAP program. It doesn't have quite the, uh, quite the direct connection to an economy up or down. It's not like a circumstance where when the economy uh, gets soft, the WIC numbers go up as SNAP numbers do. This is a, a circumstance where the program is, uh, is available in good times and bad times, and you're going to see a relatively steady participation rate in the state of Minnesota, regardless of the economic conditions, because many, many, many people uh, qualify for the program, the nature of the program. Thanks, folks.